fun. <laughs> Anyhow, here we go. Let's talk about cloud accounting. But before we do that, the two logos, whoops, those ones there, over my left shoulder. Business Station, that's who I work for. We are an uh, not-for-profit, I said NGO then, not-for-profit, we run out of Perth. We deliver the government's, federal government's digital solutions package in Queensland, WA, the Northern Territory. We actually have a dedicated team right here in Queensland based out of Brisbane uh, with actually more people outside than inside Brisbane, to be honest. We've got people all over the state and we deliver this package of curated small business advice for you with love and glee. In fact, you'll find this is the pretty awesome team who love what they do. The other side of it is Digital Solutions, which is the Australian Small Business Advisory Service Federal Government Program. It is awesome. It is, I mean, I say that without any uh, irony whatsoever. It is a great federal government program. Thank you very much, Oz Industry, for delivering this to us. Uh, it enables people like me and my colleagues to actually get out and give you guys a hand uh, without basically costing you a fortune. It's a bit like Medicare for Business, which we all need right now. So anyway, without any further ado or more babble from me, I'm going to share a screen with you because that way I've got some idea of what I'm supposed to be talking about. Uh, I'm not ignoring you. It's just that I'm running on two screens. The share screen's over there. So I'm going to sort of be looking at that half the time because that way I stay on track. Anybody who knows me, anybody who's watched my previous webinars know I can get off track quicker than a train with no tracks at all. So here we go. Accounting. Cloud Accounting, we're going to run through uh, the big three, obviously, which will be Xero, uh, QuickBooks, and Myop, and an Australian version or alternative, really, is a better word, called SASU, which I happen to like. And we'll also touch on a few of the other alternatives. Now, a couple of points. Might be important to start state this right up front. One, your accounting package is very personal, okay? It's really got to suit you and your business. It's not about necessarily what I think. It's about what works for you, okay? Secondly, if, if, you, if, you, if you're sort of jumping into your first accounting package, uh, ask your bookkeeper what they use, if you use an external bookkeeper, and then use what they use, because that'll make your life much easier. If you don't have an external bookkeeper, you just use your accountant for all your stuff, ask them what they use, because if you use what they use, it'll make your life a fair bit easier. Um, other than that, if you just want to, maybe you are using what they use and you hate it, or you just want to try something new, or you don't have one at all and you really want to get your head around the figures and know what's going on in your business, then tune in because here we go. Now, slide two. Here we go. All right, that, sorry, that's what, that's what I was talking about. It's about looking at what you need and in particular, that last line. All right, now, I don't know about you, I mean, obviously I don't, but when it comes to your business, to the numbers in your business, a lot of people just run off their bank statement to figure if they've got enough money to pay the bills. They pay the bills that yield the loudest. They get their BAS done quarterly or annually by their a bookkeeper or their accountant. They don't pay an awful amount of attention to it. And they just go about doing what they're doing without really knowing what's going on in their business. With respect, that ain't good enough. You really you really should know what's going on. And if your accountant is doing, if, or your bookkeeper is doing your BAS for you, and you're using one of these cloud systems where you can set them up as a user, so they're simply really doing it based on the information that you're putting in or that your team are putting in, then you should have your head around it. You should be in there having a good hard look at it. Okay, here in the lecture, by the way, the sermon. Now, here we go. As I said, the big three in the ring in. Um, it's funny when I mention SASU to people as I'm, as I'm wandering around doing what we do, and people are a bit, they're, they're quite sure what am I talking about. It's an Australian cloud accounting system. Uh, it looks and feels a lot like Xero and QuickBooks. It performs a lot like Xero and QuickBooks, and it is priced, you may be surprised to know, a lot like Xero and QuickBooks. It's a good bit of gear, and we'll talk more about that in a sec. The others I have a quick look at for you, uh, again, there are a ton out there, but FreshBooks, Sage, Zoho Books, and Reckon tend to hit the radar fairly often. There's another one called Wave, which a few people use, which was a free system coming out of Canada, if I recall correctly, or the US, certainly out of North America. And I had a wee look at that, but there were some glitches there with that system, so I didn't really go much further. Now, here we go. We spoke about that in terms of, you know, what, what you know, the systems your accountants know. If you're using the same system as your accountant or your bookkeeper, then you know, you've got no integration dramas, okay? It should keep your bills down because they're not double entering things. You should have access then to timely information yourself. It just makes sense. 
okay? And there's a cost issue in that. The other thing to think about is how big is your business going to be in five years or in three years' time? Like, have you sat down and mapped out where you want to be, what sort of growth you want to experience, what, sort, what, what do you want to aim for, okay, what you want to build? Because that can actually, I mean, along with every other cost in your business, that can actually have a significant impact on the cost of your accounting system because all of these systems are SaaS, right? Software as a, as a service or a subscription, okay? So you're paying every month for these. And with every one of these, there are tiers to the subscription. So as your business grows and you have more staff or more transactions, your cost will go up. And as your business grows, the complexity of your accountants, accounting needs will probably change, not necessarily, but probably change, which means the system you have now may very well in three years' time be entirely inappropriate. So there's two, there's two considerations with that. Is if you're looking at growth and if you're planning for growth, then have a look at the system that will grow with you without burning a hole in your budget, okay? And secondly, if you think the growth's a possibility, but you don't think you want the big system right now, have a look at what files can be imported between systems. Because what you'll find is that, especially uh, particularly with the big three, is that if you have zero, for example, you can import my old files to it and away you go. And if you have QuickBooks, you can import the zero. So you can literally uh, migrate from one accounting system to another relatively painlessly. Funnily enough, I mean, I mean, think about it. If you're an accounting system and you want to pinch another accounting system's clients, wouldn't you want to be able to integrate their files so that the transfer process is as seamless as possible and as painless as possible and as cheap as possible? That would make sense. And to all of Australia's, actually to Australia's financial institutions, are you paying attention? Wouldn't it be nice if you could transfer your banking from bank to bank or from credit union to building society to bank to credit union seamlessly and painlessly like that? Anyway, lecture number two put aside. Uh, the big thing is, have a look at the costs, okay? When you look at that growth pattern, it will impact on the cost, all right? Also, think about support. SAFU, uh, Australian made, support in Australia, uh, zero. New Zealand support is here and offshore. Uh, MyOB is support offshore. QuickBooks, US based support is offshore. Think about the time lags involved. Integrations. By integrations, I'm talking about the fact that with uh, HubSpot, for example, it'll talk to MyOB. So you can take sales data out of HubSpot, plug it straight into MyOB and vice versa. That's kind of cool. Think about the platforms you're using. Does your accounting system need to talk to them or do they need to talk to your accounting system? And if that's the case, then have a look at the integrations that go along with your accounting system. With integrations, there is another uh, trick or a trap. It's just a, a cute thing to pay attention to. Uh, I referred to HubSpot about 30 seconds ago. Uh, it's one of my favorite platforms. One thing with HubSpot and, and again with some of the accounting packages is when you look at the integrations, some of them are third-party integrations, but a ton of them are actually written by HubSpot or written by Xero. They are their own integrations. They are therefore more stable than third-party generally. The support is easier to access and you have less dramas. Funnily enough, that's important in business. Who'd have thought? So think about that. Think about the platforms you use. Think about your cost base. What's your growth patterns? Sorry, my supervisor just jumped up on the desk. Hey, mate. And think about the support side of things because they are all key. You do not want to be wasting time or money on your accounting system. You want to get it up, get it, get it installed, get all the data into it, make it work, train your staff, and then walk away. You don't need to be coming back to it all the time to fix problems or to winch about the cost. It's not good. So speaking of costs, here we go. That was perfectly timed. What a great segue. Now, this is as at the beginning of last month, so uh, probably hasn't changed significantly. Thing to note at the top, these are standard packages with more or less the same features, okay? However, there are always deals available. There is always a 50% off for three months or six months. There are also 
30 day free trials with all of them. They want you to get in, try it out and then stay. Okay. So two things. One, as you can see from the pricing, my old, once you add in inventory, is expensive. Zero. And QuickBooks, almost the same. Who'd have thought? Okay. SASU, for a similar sort of system, it's somewhat cheaper. However, with SASU, its payment scales are based on transaction levels. So have a think about how often you're actually transacting information in your accounting system. And by that, they're talking uh, basically bank statement items and purchases and uh, sales. I was going to say invoices, but sales. So that price there, 40 per month for SASU, gives you pretty much up to um, medium-sized small business. Okay, so the reason I've put in, there is, there is a smaller, cheaper version of SASU, and there are indeed cheaper versions of these guys for small businesses, like as in for micro business, really. But that's your standard small business package, give or take. Uh, and obviously, as you can see, there are, there are tricks. Now, with my old, yes, the inventory is extra. With zero, its inventory is not the smartest part of the system. Okay, so there's a bit of a trade off there. Um, and there's, there's a few more things, I'll talk about them later. I think that's your spot for, for when we talk about the apps. Okay, now, this is why you want to do the 30 day free trial. Okay, ease of use. Okay, how intuitive is it to get the data you need easily? That's funnily enough, that's actually kind of important to your bookkeeper and to your internal staff. Okay, how, how, you know, when you look at it, do you actually click and go, yes, I know what to do, or do you have to study it and learn it? Right, now, to give you a bit of a heads up, I use my up here at home uh, simply because I think we are one of the three people in Australia who still own their my up. There's not many of us left. We don't pay a monthly subscription. We bought it uh, a few years ago now. We've got one of the last ones in captivity. When the support for that gives up and when the, the file starts not behaving properly, then I think we'll look at migrating to something in the cloud. But from an intuitive point of view, my up took a little bit to learn. However, it's, it's like a lot of things. Once you learn how to use it, it's good as gold. Have a look at the cash flow projections and budget tools in the software when you're doing that trial. And the reason I state that is that in my experience, not enough businesses have a look at what's coming up in the next 12 months in terms of expense and possible sales. You've got it in the back of your mind, but you don't have a formal pl planning and monitoring process. These guys will help you, okay? And have a look at the app functionality. Okay, and I said that he doesn't have any cute tricks. Let's talk about cute tricks in the apps for a second because, well, it's my webinar and I've got a second, so let's do it. All right, apps, apps, QuickBooks. One thing I love about QuickBooks, the app has a business travel log function. You've got your car details loaded up in the system. You And this is really cool if you've got staff who travel, they simply get into the car, hit the zero app, hit the, the function for business trip and away they go and it logs the trip for them, does the mileage for them, uploads it to the system. So you've got it in there without, it. it's a logbook. The app has a logbook in it that doesn't require any real manual work. That is fundamentally cool. I don't know why the other guys don't, I really I really don't know why the other guys don't do it. Myob, okay, that's that's on a really cute scale. Myob, let's go to the uncute scale. Myob doesn't have an app, they have two, one, app if you want to pay people, one app if you want to issue invoices and be paid. Why? Why do you do that? Okay, Zero, one app. QuickBooks, one app. SASU, one app. Zoho, all the others, they have an app, but Myob has two. No, I don't understand that. Uh, if, if anybody out there knows why this is so, doing Professor Sunderman or Clark, if you know why this is so, let me know because it's fundamentally counterintuitive. All righty, moving right along. Now, sorry. Let's go back to here. In terms of the app, the SASU app operates pretty much the same as the others. Okay, they all use the same terms. Oh, fun consideration number four. I really should put that in there. All of these accounting packages uh, are based around double entry accounting. That's the system that we tend to use in Australia. 
So by definition, they're actually all doing the same thing. So the differences between them are fundamentally minimal. It really comes down to the interface. That's really the only difference in them. They don't calculate anything any differently. It's just a case of how do they take your transaction, the purchase you've made, the sale you made, the wages you have to pay, they simply take that transaction and translate it into accounting speak. It's a little data in the background. So when you're looking at them, you need to be aware that at a fundamental level, they all do the same job. It really comes down to try it and to see which one talks to you best. When you look at it, can you understand it? They all have a dashboard that you can basically play around with so that when you first log into your system, you have, and I'm just trying to find something else I was writing here the other day about this. You have, oops, a, a very quick overview of the business. You know where things are up to. Right? Because obviously to do otherwise is simply counterintuitive. Oh, hang on. I did have something very cute written for myself as a reminder about that very, very thing. Okay. Oh. And luckily, I have just found it. Here we go. I'm glad I came back to this screen because otherwise I would have forgotten about all this really cool stuff I was going to tell you. Okay. Cash flow projections. QuickBooks has a cash flow projection tool for 24 months. It'll do a two-year cash flow for you, and it has an add-in. So you can export that to Excel, which is very cool. Why is that very cool, you ask? Thank you for asking. The reason that is very cool is that means that you can take your data straight out of QuickBooks, export it into Excel, and then you can add into it, or you can add it to a cash flow projection or a cash flow budget where you've got variables that can be related to turnover. Uh, given, I'll, tell, I'll give you a live example. It's probably the best way of explaining. I'm a bit clumsy about this. We'll explain it this way. Last week, I had a one-on-one -on -one session with one of our clients, lovely bloke, uh, without naming any names, um, driving instructor. Now, he sells various packages. You can have a one-hour lesson with him. You can have a package of five-hour lessons. You can have a package of 10-hour lessons, or you can actually have your instruction, Your so your testing so I drive to the testing, do your test, come home. That's another package. Now, they're all different prices, of course. You get discounts for five and a bigger discount for 10, and the testing thing's a different package because it's more time and the one hour is a set rate. So we built a cash flow projection that had all these variables in for each month, the different types of income, and then the income for the month was based on what numbers of hours he put in or the number of packages he would sell per month. And that those hours then flowed through to his fuel costs, which flowed through to his repair and maintenance costs and his tire cost. So, so that he could actually have a look at, at what point or what workload or what sales level he would be generating a certain amount of money. And if he only did this many hours, how much money would he make? And if he did more hours, what would, that, what would happen then? So long story cut short, we come back to QuickBooks. It exports to Excel. So you can take all of your historical data and use that to map out the next 12 months. But then you can actually, because you're in Excel, you can actually put these calculations in, these variable fields in, and you can do actual versus budget projections. And again, exporting the actual data out of Excel, uh, sorry, out of QuickBooks. So when you open up your Excel budget planner, it's got live data. You don't have to double it, you don't have to enter it twice. It's there, good as gold. That is very cute. It means that when you're looking at your cash flow budget in Excel, there's no if there's an entry data issue, it's happened back in QuickBooks. It's not you double handling and typing it and making, making stuff up. So the chances of, of errors in the data are reduced. It means the, the data is live, so it's accurate. Okay, it's up to the minute. And it means you can actually track your performance and you can adjust accordingly every time you look at it, which means you're making decisions that are driven by data, not by gut instinct. Now that's, that's about 15 minutes in another webinar, that just that particular topic, but coming back to where we are here, that trick of QuickBooks is very, very cool. Myop, 
has a budget function, which is by, sort of a default cash by budgeting tool, not too shabby. Zero also has one, SASU has one. Okay, they've all got it, but out of the four of the big guys, QuickBooks with that Excel export is very cool. Zero kind of has it. Speaking of zero, as I said before, inventory is its weak point. However, there are a ton of apps that will do that for you. They are, of course, going to cost a little bit, so factor that in. But if we come back over to the other side here and we go back to pricing, zero, 54 a month, mild, including inventory, 120 a month. I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you that the inventory add-ins for zero will not cost you $66 a month, okay? But watch the staffing thing with zero because my ob, I've got to stop doing that. With my ob, there's no payroll limits. You know, as many staff as you want, which is kind of cool if you're running a fair few people. With zero, once you get over two staff, it's going to cost you with QuickBooks, it's $5 for every employee on payroll. No, I'm sorry. I don't know why it's $5 per employee, given that QuickBooks really aren't doing that much work when you put on another employee. I really don't get it. Okay, I find that fundamentally challenging. However, it is what it is. Okay, so that's profound. Uh, apart from that functionality, uh, the QuickBooks apps, as well as the knowledge function, is a doddle to use. It's just really quite cute. Zero as well is very easy to use. And my, as I said, has two. Don't know why. SASU, also very easy to use. Now, the apps for these accounting packages are very simple. It's just so you can do your basic functions when you're on the road. Okay, so you can bill somebody, you can make a sale on the road, or you can pay for something if you've got to pick up some supplies or you're on COD, or you figured while you're out, you'd pay that account because it's due tomorrow anyway, and you get to drop in and see your supplier and do that building relationships thing that we even, we do every now and then in business. Now, let's come back to my notes to make sure I stay on track with you guys. Okay, let's, let's have a look. We come back over here. Oh, there we go. Here we go. The other four I mentioned. SASU, uh, sorry, Sage. Um, Sage is a beautiful user, user interface. Like that, the actual interaction with Sage is lovely. I really liked it, but it is pricey if you want to expand or if you want payroll, okay? And the bank feed system, as I saw it, and it's the best I could figure out, was clunky, clunky as hell. And, it was, and you had to pay extra for it. I don't know why. What is pastry for bank foods? Everybody else adds it in. It's, 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 it's a given. Okay, you want to take your bank statements out of your bank and shove them in your accounting system and automate it so there's no entry errors. So why is it just there? Everybody else does. Bizarre. Quite, quite fundamentally challenging. I just don't understand that at all. However, uh, and, and they're the two big drawbacks that I saw, okay, was that clunky bank feed system expensive bank feed system and the fact that you know as you grow it's going to cost you okay with payroll it's going to cost you so it just in terms of you know if i was going to put in place a cloud a, a cloud accounting system now or just an accounting system now it, it wouldn't be on my radar okay for those reasons reckon now reckon used to sell quickbooks back in the day okay they licensed licensed it out of the us until quickbooks decided they're going to do their own cloud system Eventually, they got around to writing their own cloud-based system. However, inventory is a third-party add-on. So I'm also going to pay for that, which is, you know, with Myob, you've got to pay for it as well. And it requires some setup. There are some hidden features in there that you've got to dig and dig. However, it is a cheaper system, and it's some people love it and some people hate it. I looked at the, the user interface in terms of, you know, would I use it myself? And I went, no, oh, meh, you know. I didn't find it terribly challenging. I didn't have to sit there for hours figuring out how, how to make it work, how to put transactions in it. That was quite relatively straightforward. However, every time I do that, I, I've got to, I do it from the point of view of somebody who does that sort of stuff most days of the week and has done it for a long time. If I was somebody who didn't have my background, um, which is probably most people, I would find reckon would take a little bit of learning. Okay, uh, fresh books. So again, it sort of fell off the radar a bit because the others I thought had more functionality for similar money. Okay, a little bit more, but it was easier to use. Fresh books, limited functions at those lower price points. Okay, and the funny thing was, 
Oh, and this may simply be my complete lack of understanding. Whoa, whoa, easy, Tiger. There we go. My complete lack of understanding. But I just thought as a business-to-business -business option, okay, if you're just dealing purely with other businesses, it just didn't really seem to have the functionality I wanted, right? And there was no automatic BAS calculation. What? No auto BAS. What's with that? We've got to do it at least once a year, usually quarterly for most of us, monthly for a few of us. Why not? Bizarre. So it was bang straight off the radar. Sorry, you failed. Zoho, Zoho Books. Now, Zoho Books is part, obviously, of the Zoho family. They've got a great CRM. They've got some other tricks and tools in there. But I found with Zoho Books, limited automation. I'm not a fan of that. If you're going to put an accounting system in, you want it to be as automated as possible. All right, up to its earlobes if you can, because that way there's less work, there's less chance of errors, and you can put in place some very nice sales funnel tricks that sit alongside it so it all works together harmoniously. Zoho didn't really do that. So, ba -ba computer says no. All right. And this, it just didn't have the functionality that it had in the other ones. Now, as I said before, um, I did have Sassy on that sheet. Then, after reviewing it and going into it, like, yeah, no, actually, I'll put it on the front because it belongs up the front with the other three. Because, in my experience, when I looked at them, it was a legit competitor to the big three. Okay, its interface was as good. It's smaller version. Okay, so the cheaper version we might pick if you're on a low transaction, if you're a low transaction business, which is typically eighty percent of our small and micro businesses. Okay, now having said that, QuickBooks micro version is very good. So if you if you're at that low transaction, you've got maybe one or two staff. Compare both of them. All right, thirty day free trial is your friend. Okay, have a crack at them, and then see how you go see which one you're happier with which one you want to interface with a bit more okay um if cash flow budgeting really wasn't as good as the big three the app was as good uh but with the cash flow budgeting again i'm a fan of excel i think that if you're going to do a cash flow budget that you actually sit down and really think long and hard about where you're going and what your cost base is and what your sales are going to look like and what impacts on sales and how that flows through your expenses and really get your head around it or get somebody in to do it, do it with you, not for you, do it with you. Okay, so you really have that that not that that knowledge, the data in front of you. It's, it's, everybody knows really how their business operates and what's going on, but to have the data there is important. Okay, it fundamentally underpins all the decisions you make. So that was the one letdown with SASU was that but I gave it sort of five out of 10 bit of a pass mark because you can export the data out. You should do your cash flows externally anyway. All of the cash flow budget systems in these accounting systems look at historical data and project it outwards. Uh, and with sales, I simply look at what you've got due to come in and project that outwards and that's it. There's no, they don't guess. There's not, you, know, you can actually enter in data for future sales as in estimates. And you can play with expenses a bit, but there's no ability to link uh, cause and effect. That's what I'm looking for. You can't put in cause and effect into any of those. All right. And if you're going to do a cash flow budget, a legit cash flow budget, you've got to have cause and effect in there. All right. You've got to have an understanding of the consequences of what happens on either side, either income or expenses, how that affects the overall position. Okay. Now, just scrolling through. Now, we've actually just kind of really ripped through to this. Come here. Summary, here we go. Look at that. Seriously, that took us half an hour. And, and to be honest, actually, to be brutally honest with you, I think that from a, an accounting point of view, that is pretty much about spot on. Okay, and as much as it's not... A, a difficult decision that you should spend weeks mulling over, okay? I've said it several times, free trials are your friends, okay? But ooh, again, I keep tapping the screen. 30 day free trial, okay, and just remembering, and here's the cute thing, is that a lot of, they, they all talk to each other. You can export files from one to the other to the other. So have a look at which accounting systems will take an import from which other accounting systems and just daisy chain them. So you can, over the 
over the course of six months. I think like when I was when I was doing the research for this, I figured out I could do nine it was 10 months of accounting for free. We're going from one to the other to the other to the other, and away we go. And within that 10 months, I would have got enough hands-on uh, experience, for want of a better word, uh, enjoyment of these systems to, to have a feel for which one would have suited my business best. And I think within 30 days, if you think about your typical 30 days, okay, four business weeks, your staff or yourself will get enough feel, will have enough experience with the systems to understand which ones you like and which ones you don't like. In fact, you might find within two weeks you simply want to bin it and start another trial and import the files into that and away you go. And importing the files is critical. You do not want to have to re-enter all the data. Oh my goodness, no. We are not going there. Okay. So second point, think carefully about growth. Okay, imports on cost as functionality increases. That is actually a little more important than you think. I might sound a little bit glib with a whole, you can get nine months free accounting. Okay. But the reason you would go through the pain of doing that is that that way you get a feel for what's going to work and what's going to work long term. It's okay to do it at the start. Nothing wrong with that at all. But I'll tell you this for free. You do not really want to be changing accounting systems after two or three or four years of using one particular system, because then you're suddenly going to have to go through a learning curve when you're really up and running. It's not fun. I've seen it done uh, by some people who are smarter than me and even they struggled a little bit getting the, the whole staff to change the way they did business in small ways, not massive ways, but just little things that to break habits. Easy enough to break a habit after 30 days, not much fun after three years. Okay, so have a red hot think about the growth that you're going to experience and what you're after, okay? This can help you plan it out if you get it right, okay? Because it is a cost thing. It's also a functionality thing. You know, if you're running, if the payroll's a little clunky, but it's okay because you've only got three staff, that's cute, okay? You can get away with that. But what about when you've got 13 staff or 20 staff or 30 staff, okay? If you're running offices in three states and you've got to account to an overseas partner, so cute then, is it? So have a think, have a red hot think. Now, I say that knowing that you know, we all know that the things happen in business that you can't plan, right? you simply can't allow for, right? but having, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't plan for what you want to have happen and structure your business accordingly. And the third thing is how mobile do you need to be? And I use that word deliberately, need, not want. See, with your accounting system, just because it has an app doesn't mean you have to use it. Okay. Doesn't mean, okay, Myo has two apps, which I think is fundamentally ridiculous. So what? What if your, your accounting is done in the office? You know, you, what if you, you never need to sit in somebody's premises and bill them or pay them? It doesn't matter that they've got two apps. That's, who cares? Right? You may love the functionality with this inventory system back in the office because it does have a pretty robust inventory system. That may be what, you, what you're really after. And you've also got 23 staff and that doesn't cost you any extra. So you're happy with that. And my office payroll is actually quite quite good. I like it a lot. Okay, so we've used it for a few years. Very nice. So just think about, I guess it's not just a case of how mobile you need to be. It's about how are you going to use it? Who's going to use it? And what sort of data do you want to get out of it? What do you think you really need? Okay, what sort of dashboards do you want to see? What sort of reports do you want to produce? How's it going to integrate with your accountant and your bookkeeper if you use a bookkeeper? Right? These, all these things are just little things, but when you start adding them up, when you get them right, it makes this part of your business, which can be an absolute pain, makes this part of your business smoother, less friction, more reliable data, more timely reliable data, which means you're making timely, reliable decisions because you've got the numbers to back them up because you know what's going on in your business, okay? The information is accurate and timely, which is what it always should be. And I say that from the background of a guy who was in business banking, used to getting financial statements that were 18 months out of date and there was nothing current because who does that, okay? So we're going to wrap this up nice and early. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll just drop back out of that for a second. 
I'll come back to that for you. There are no questions, which is interesting. Interesting. I would have thought there'd be at least one question out of this. So that's really cool. Let's go back to the screen for a second. And where are we? Look at that. I just bought one. Happy days. Now, the digital solutions package, okay, that's kind of what this is part of. It's $44 for seven hours of curated, targeted, tailored, bespoke, made for you training. Uh, actually, some of it is bespoke. That's, that's actually, I was thinking about that. That's actually true. We have actually written, I know I have written a couple of workshops for people where they've asked for them. So we're going, okay, well, actually, we know enough about that to write a workshop on it. This seven hours of, of business training is brought to you by the federal government. Okay? We literally, I mean, it says on the screen that expert advisors covering everything digital. Well, that's actually kind of true. Okay, because that's kind of what we do. So if you're watching this and it's part of your free program, but you actually haven't signed up for the $44, for the $44 package where you get that one-on-one -on -one mentorship, you get that personal dive into your business to help you fix problems in it and make your business better and bigger and smoother and making more money for you. If you haven't done that, do it, okay? It's just, I don't know, just do it, really. It's, it's that much better for you and it will make your business that much more fun because business should be fun. Goodness, it's hard enough. Why not put some fun in there? Now, moving right along. Okay, that's, that's my, my blurby advertising thing for the week. We are at the end. There's a smiley face there because I actually love doing this. This is really cool. This There's my contact details. So if you're watching this recording at home, because uh, unlike me, you had other things to do in the middle of the day, that's fine. If you've got questions, there's the email address. Okay, it's right over there. Okay, buy me an email, I'll answer it. Okay, no drama. If you want to give me a call, pick up the phone and ring. I don't mind. Okay, we'll have a chat over the phone about how we can make things better for you, how you can plug in and get some more information, or if it's just accounting system specific, you can do that too. Happy to answer those questions. It's kind of um, why they keep dragging me out for this thing, I think. Anyhow, given all that, we'll turn that off because you've seen enough screeny stuff. Let's come back. All right. Now, I've actually wrapped that up enormously quickly. Obviously, as people say, I talk too fast. If there are no questions there at all, what I might do is just turn this thing off. Thank you for the attendees. Loved having your company. All right, for those of you who are watching this at home, in the comfort of your lounge, with your favorite beverage, getting a little bit of education from us, thank you. Okay, I really appreciate you taking the time and putting a bit of faith in us. Uh, I hope I've added some value to you and helped you pick out uh, just another platform that will make your life in business that little bit easier, that little bit better, help you get some more accurate data. So when you're actually making decisions and you're plotting the way forward in business, which is a hell of a challenge some days, but at least you can look at the numbers and say, the numbers are real, they're accurate, they're on time. I, I can believe them. They're telling me what's going on in the background of the business. And you can make some decisions based on that sort of information, which is super critical. So for you guys, in fact, for everybody, thank you very much. I will see you again sometime. Check out all the other stuff at businessstation.com.au and sayonara.